A Song for Silas by Laurie Wick Chapter 8 Amy was halfway across the yard before she realized the barn door was partially open. Quickening her steps while avoiding mud puddles, Amy approached the barn in unbelief. Silas had actually beaten her to the milking. Amy stood a few minutes just inside, recovering from her surprise when a deep voice spoke from amid a row of various colored cows. There's no reason for you to be out here, Amy. I can take care of everything. Amy followed the voice until she stood at Silas's side. When he raised his head, she spoke with a teasing voice. Am I being dismissed? Before he could answer, Amy began to laugh at his appearance. At his appearance. Oh, Silas, she said between giggles, I forgot how much you look like a bear in the mornings. Her words so mimicked Luke's opinion of Silas's morning appearance, he had to smile. Amy returned the smile with a warm one of her own and said, I'll have breakfast ready when you get in. Within the hour, Silas was in the kitchen bending over the washstand. After brushing his hair and beard into some semblance of order, he headed to the table. That was the focal point of the Nolan kitchen. The room was not overly large and the table and stove took up most of the floor space. Over six feet in length and easily four feet wide, the table was space-consuming by any standard, but seemed especially so with just Silas sitting and watching Amy dish up food from the stove. She had outdone herself this morning. Silas's eyes took in sausage, eggs, bacon, fried potatoes, biscuits, three choices of jam, oatmeal, milk, and coffee. As Amy continued to work, Silas's eyes skimmed over the room he had briefly passed through the night before. It was just as he remembered. Two small windows looked out over the front yard. The curtains were very plain white cotton, but somehow fitting in this simple room. Hooks on the wall, a washstand, stove, and small, low work table along one wall. Yes, everything was as he recalled. When Amy joined Silas at the table, she asked him to pray. She was impressed again with the feeling that all was going to be well as Silas petitioned God on behalf of Grant Nolan. Silas asked God outright to ease Grant's pain and put him back on his feet. He prayed with such assurance that Amy felt that was exactly what God would do. When the prayer ended, they ate in companionable silence until Silas questioned Amy about the robbery. Amy told him what they had learned from Doc and then ended with, I plan to drive into town tomorrow. I always take time to see Aunt Bev, so I'm sure she'll give me any news we've missed out here. Does she ever come out here to see you? Silas asked, although not quite, sh although quite sure what the answer would be. No, Uncle Evan forbids it. Her voice was so sad that Silas wished he'd kept his question to himself. Grant woke not long after breakfast, and Silas went in to see him. The two men spent the next two hours in deep conversation. Amy moved between the bedroom and the kitchen, getting her father's breakfast and then bringing coffee as the morning slipped by. When Silas finally left the bedroom so Grant could get some more rest, he knew exactly what Grant wanted done in the next several weeks. The milking and hauling, the fields, and care for the animals, they had covered it all. Silas would also be finishing the painting of the barn and house, the very cause for Grant's bedridden condition, and not a comfortable subject. When Silas had first brought up the matter of doing the painting, Grant had said absolutely not, the painting could wait. But Silas was undeterred, after, and after some coaxing and reasoning, Grant had agreed to tell what his plans had been prior to falling from the ladder. When Silas sat down to the table for noon dinner, he was holding a list of supplies he would need from town. He and Amy discussed the list and, list and agreed that it would be easiest if he accompanied her. They planned to leave the following morning after breakfast. They would stop on the way so Amy could ask a neighbor to check on Grant at midday and get his meal. The remainder of the day went by with chores and small talk. Silas helped Grant to the kitchen table for supper, and the three of them talked and laughed long after the dishes were cleared and the coffee pot empty. It was a warm and special beginning to Silas's stay with the Nolans.